Hello everyone, today we are here to talk about Harry Potter, of course, because why else would I be wearing my Harry Potter glasses? More specifically, we're going to be talking about Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Recently just finished listening to this book and I'm trying to finish rereading all of the Harry Potter books. I've read them all countless times over and over again. A couple years ago I had read the first three and I'm like I need to really finish rereading them because it's been a long time since I've reread them because of other books and stuff. So I decided to listen to the via audio and from here on out I will be reviewing each book that I listened to and talking about it and also talking about the movie, how you know I felt about listening to the book again or how I felt about you know rereading the book again and how I felt and how I felt about how the book the movie adaptation did. So today we're talking about Harry Potter. This book was pretty lengthy. This is the first like this is when Harry Potter decided this is when the books get really big kind of you know. The first three are pretty average size books and then the fourth one comes out and it's pretty big and then of course it gets huger and huger. So this book was around like I want to say 22 hours of audiobook and I was like how am I gonna do this? But I flew through it because I was so invested in it. And listening to audio is a whole new venture for me. Like I said, I've reread the books, I've reread the series countless times, I watched the movies, and I've never listened to audio. So listening to audio was actually, it felt like, it felt like reading it for the first time. Like I was gasping, I was like, oh my gosh, what's gonna happen? And I'm like, Heather, you already know what's gonna happen. You duh like you've read this series countless times you know but I was still anticipating it the narrator was amazing it was just such a like it was like a whole new world for me literally love listening to it I highly recommend even if you've read Harry Potter and you want to read it again listen to it even if if you're a beginner with Harry Potter and you want to get into it but you're scared to read them listen to them listening to them is so fun the narrator is so amazing it's just amazing uh, my favorite Harry Potter book will hands down always be Prisoner of Azkaban I have very emotional ties to that book because I just have a very strong memory of it and you know, I've talked about that countless times, but I really loved Goblet of Fire. I feel like I, I love every Harry Potter book. Goblet of Fire is also such a fun, thrilling ride. We have this whole Triwizard Tournament, and that's really what this whole book, this particular book is about, you know, these three tasks, this Triwizard Tournament. Somebody's put Harry Potter's name in the Goblet of Fire, and he's entered in this really, like, insane competition, and it's all about that, and it's just so fun. Like, I feel like this is the last fun book, if that makes sense, because yes, in the first three we, you know, have a sense of a lot of adventure and kind of scary stuff with Lord Voldemort, but this book I feel is where we're really introduced and at the end it gets really like, holy crap, this is, this series is about to get like for reals, you know what I'm saying? So this book um, is, is like a, a fun adventure and the end it starts to, you start to realize that this series is about to get a little bit more grown up because each book is uh, focusing on a new age of Harry Potter. So he was 14 in this book, and so we have 15, 16, and 17, obviously. But this book is, I feel like, we're getting on the cusp of teenager, of being a teenager, and all that teen angst, and all that good stuff, and also all the scariness that comes with Lord Voldemort, and all of those kind of things, and the ministry, and the politicalness. I feel like all that really starts to happen in this book, and you really start to see a little glimpse of it in here, in this book, where it goes on to further into play, obviously, with five six and seven but this book I feel like was the last like hurrah of adventure like fun adventure because yes it was scary that Harry Potter's entered in the drivers of the tournament but it was fun reading about it you know with the dragons and the mermaids and that last maze it was fun reading about it it was fun you know him finding out all these clues and you have this whole looming thing of Lord Voldemort in the background you know if he's gonna come to power is he gonna come back he does and it just gets insane so, book, you know maybe 10 years ago you're obviously gonna forget things and there are things I did forget when I was listening to it. And I was like, oh yeah, I remember that. Um, the first thing, the biggest thing to me is spew. Spew. Is that how you say it? Spew? S-P-E-W. Reminding me this big thing with the elves in this. I totally forgot about that because it really wasn't mentioned in the movies, which I don't know why, but you know, it's hard to translate this into like a two-hour movie. Really hard. So of course things are going to be left out, but I really loved revisiting Spew and you know, her fighting for these house elves. And house elves were such a huge part of this book that you don't get to see in the movie. So if you haven't watched, if you haven't read the books and you watch the movies, house elves are a big part of this book. Also, we get the Ron and Hermione things, you know. Um, I will always be a Ron and Hermione shipper till the end. I don't care what anyone says, even the author. I know she says that she, if she could rewrite it, she would not do it. I 
I, I don't care. I just, I'm Ron and Hermione for life, no matter what. They'll always be my number one, always. We get to see a tiny glimpse of, you know, things happening, especially with the Yule Ball, and then her going with Crumb, and Ron getting really upset, destroying his Crumb figurine. Who remembers that? I vividly will always remember that. You know, he was like, no more love in Crumb because he took my girl away. <laughs> And that's hilarious but you know it's finally you know Ron starts to see Hermione as a girl and we get a little bit of Cho Chang in this book and you know I don't love Cho Chang but Harry needed a he needed a lady in this book and Jenny doesn't ever come I don't think when is Jenny and him and Jenny start talking like fifth or sixth let's see six right it's gotta be six I don't remember <laughs> But um, that happened. What else? A lot of Barty Crouch. In the movie, you don't get a ton of Barty Crouch. You know, you just see that he was a very stern type of um, ministry worker and then he just showed up dead in the movie. In the book, there was so much more with Barty Crouch, learning more about him, l learning more about him, learning about how his ways, you know, him coming up into the forest and him talking to Harry and him trying to fight this curse off. You know, I, t I, I admit, I forgot all about that, honestly, because you forget things. And I mean, that happens. But reliving it it was just amazing you know and I didn't like the one thing I didn't like about the movie because I just rewatched it is the fact in the beginning you know after the world cup that um they threw up the dark mark and if you read the book you know who does it it's Barty Crouch Jr but they show him they show him in the movie and you don't know in the book who it is at all you just see the dark mark you don't even see who's cast it you just see it it's literally there you just know it was cast with Harry Potter's wand and this in the movie they actually showed the guy and then you, you, they show the guy. They don't tell you it's Barty Crouch Jr., but they show him. And then later, when Harry's looking at the pensive, you get to see that, oh, that's Barty Crouch Jr. I'm like, that? No, that's not how we figure it out. Like, we didn't figure all this crap out till the end. You know what I'm saying? I just didn't like that. Another thing, I'm sorry, I will be all over the place with this because I have random thoughts, and I have a lot of them, so they're just going to be spewing. <laughs> See what I did there? The thing I wish they would have done the movies is shown more of the World Cup. It's another amazing thing about this book is the World Cup, watching it, and it was just so much fun. I wish they would have shown just a little bit of the gameplay, but I understand, you know, it wasn't a huge chunk of the book. They really had to devote all of the movie pretty much to these three tasks, which I get, but you know, of course there's always gonna be snippets, but the World Cup was just so much fun action to read about. I wish they would have shown a little bit more. Another thing they didn't put in the movies at all is Ludo Bagman. And I have no complaints about that because I feel like, yes, Ludo Bagman was somewhat of a big part of this book, but he was just kind of like a sneaky snake, a dude that was like, he's gonna wrong you, he's just dumb. So I feel like oh, it's okay, it wasn't in the movie, but I mean, it was just so much fun listening to this book. I was so worried about Harry when he went to the second task. I was like, oh crap, what are you gonna find? You need to find your gillyweed, you need to find it, you need to find it, I know you gotta find it, who gives it to you? Like, and I knew the answers to all of this. I was like, I know what's gonna happen, I know you're gonna do okay, but I was still like anticipating it and like fearing it to no end. Does that make sense? Like I was just reliving it, almost listening to it or reading it for the first time and I was like, oh, this task, where are you gonna get past this dragon? I don't know. Movie, I rewatched it. It's not one of the best Harry Potter movies, but it's a fun movie. I thought the movie did pretty decent as far as a book to movie adaptation. I mean, of course, they left a lot of stuff out, but it's hard. It's really hard to, you know, make this into a two and a half hour movie. And of course, I thought the last scene, the last part of the movie was really good, you know, when Voldemort came back to life and he was, that, that part was really scary. I think that's like the first glimpse of like really Harry Potter getting scary, you know, because things are changing. You're learning in the book too, book more specifically than the movie. You're learning that the minute Ministry is really scared and they're not willing to accept that Voldemort is back so they're starting to turn on Dumbledore which is a first because in the first three books you think that Dumbledore can never be stopped. He is just top dog and nobody is ever going to say no to him and you see in this book that it's starting to happen and it's really starting to happen in the fifth book and things are not turning out for him as they really should be and as you know he probably thinks that they should be but the ministry is like turning on him and not believing him so you really get a whole thing of political in the end of this book and even more the fifth book's probably say really really political you know with everything going on in that with Umbridge and ugh, I'm not looking forward to listening to Umbridge because she is just the absolute worst but we get to really see at the end of this book how dark Harry Potter's gonna get, how political it's gonna get, is evil's really gonna come into place. So I feel like after this book really starts getting into the grown-up Harry Potter, especially the fifth one, I wanna say, and I may rustle some feathers here, that the fifth one might be my least favorite if I can remember correctly because 
I believe that Harry Potter is really angsty in that book because it's 15 and teen angst happens, people. It's a real thing. We all went through it. I went through it. So I feel like Harry Potter, I think in the fifth one's a little bit more whiny, a little bit more angsty, and you're like, I just, this series, guys, listening to the series is just making me feel like an 11 year old girl again. I feel like I'm just reading it for the first time. I'm falling in love with it. I have noticed I will take extra long car rides to listen to this book. I will listen to it when I'm cooking. Any chance to listen to it, I will listen to it because I feel like it's, I'm reading it for the first time and it's literally such a magical thing. Is that cliche? Probably, but I don't care. It, it literally is magical to me and it just makes me feel so fond of this series and so happy because it makes me feel happy. And I just really hope that my son will love it as much as I do. Yeah. So if you've read Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, tell me what was your favorite part? What was your not favorite part? My favorite part was probably the World Cup. The World Cup was just so fun to read about, as well as just the task. I thought that was really fun to read about. And my least favorite part, I don't... Mm. I think I have a least favorite part in this book. Not this. And what is your favorite Harry Potter book? Let's talk all things about Harry Potter. And this month I will be listening to Order of the Phoenix and I'm listening to it right now. I just started on chapter three and I got a lot to go because that one's like 27 hours long. It's just, I love this series. It's, it's, it's like, it's like my other baby. <laughs> if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Bye.